my bed on. All right. Don't be long. I want to have a long as a bed. Catch up with you in the park. Will I get the coffee? No, I'll get them. It's usual. Okay? Died from a single slash to the throat. She probably aspirated blood, but the cause of death will most likely be uh, exsanguination and shock. Attacked from behind. Very good, detective. You notice the patterning. Uh, right handed, uh, cutting left to right, thus, very sharp knife. Uh, straight blade, no serration. Defense wound. No, no, this was very sudden. She wouldn't even have had time to scream. The larynx was immediately compromised. Bag still here, untouched. Wasn't robbery. How's the husband? Agitated, but holding it together. Too well? Maybe. I mean, he leaves his wife for 10 minutes to have a punt, then he finds her dead. You'd expect him to be more upset. Hmm, let's uh, leave our options open, shall we? Does he have any theories on who'd want to kill him? No clue. They come here three mornings a week, a regular thing with their grandchild. What about the body? Any apparent motives? No robbery, no sexual assault. Baby was unharmed. So we're thinking what? It was random, maybe a thrill kill? We've organised some uniforms to canvas the surrounding buildings. Good. If they came here regularly, maybe she was a target, not random. You and Matt stay with him and uh, wait till he settles down and talk to him again. Sarge. Dad! Dad! Dad, what's happened? Where's Chloe? Is Chloe all right with Chloe? No, 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 the baby's she? fine, the baby's fine. Listen, listen. What? What? She's gone. Reva, I got your message. I've still got deliveries to do. What's going on? I'll get Chloe inside. Dad, I'll take her. You're in shock. You I'll need do to... it. What's happened? Detective Ryan, and you are? This is my husband, Alex. Um, Alex, it's Mum. She was attacked in the park. She's, she's dead, Alex. She was killed. What? <laughs> How? Let's just take this inside, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 30 years we've been married. 30 years. Breakfast just a couple of hours ago. Who would do something like this? God! Chloe's down. Do you want some more tea, Kevin? I still got some, for God's sake. 
Stop fussing, will you? Just sit down. Oh, Mr. Steele, when you uh, feel up to it, we need you to answer some more questions. Can't you give him some time? He just found his wife's body. I've seen bodies before. This is hardly the same. Ask your questions. I don't shirk my responsibilities. Mr. Steele, can you think of any reason why your wife might have been a target for a killer? Target? But wasn't this just some senseless attack? We think it's possible that this person chose your mother as their victim. No. No, 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 I don't believe it. Who'd want to hurt a woman? Maybe someone who wanted to hurt you. You'd certainly present a more difficult proposition in terms of an attack. Yeah, well, I think of anyone who'd want to have a go at me. Well, what about the guy at the pub? He was just a loud mouth. What happened? Nothing. He was using foul language in front of me and Mum. Dad told him to shut up. But he wouldn't leave it alone. He thought he was a tough guy. It's nothing. He took a swing at me. He regretted it. Can you identify this man? No. You just make sure you catch the bastard that killed her. We'll do everything we can, sir. If it was up to me, I'd put it... put him down like a dog. He doesn't have to ID her. No, it can wait. He identified her at the scene. We'll make her belongings available as soon as forensics are done with them. OK. We're sorry for your loss. This... this guy at the pub... he made threats afterwards. The barman can probably give you a name. He goes there a fair bit, I think. Got a description? Big tats. How old is your father-in-law? 56, I think. And he took this guy on? What, the floor with him? It must be a tough nut. Mate, you don't know the half of it. Let go of me, you bastard! Shut up! Screw you! No, thanks. You're the one who screwed, mate. We've got you on assault, police, whatever happened. Well, that'll be the file. Shane Cobble of Jeffries. Two charges of assault, one I'm afraid, two DUIs, suspended license. Have fun. Shane, why did you start throwing punches? I didn't know you were cops. Look, I owe some people some money. I thought they'd send you around to remind me. Crap. You knew we were cops. I'll say it louder. We're homicide. I never murdered anybody. OK, you had a fight in a pub three weeks ago. Do you remember that? A guy King hit me, so he walked away. He didn't King hit you. He taught you a lesson. He humiliated you. Decided to do something about that, did you? What do you say, no? I killed that aggro guy in the pub. You tell us. No, he's, he's the maniac. You want to talk about a vicious temper? He's lucky I didn't call the cops on him. What happened? I was on my own business, and, and, and he gets into my face and grandstanding in front of his family. And that's not their version of events. OK, how about this? Afterwards, you wanted payback, and you knew you couldn't take him, so you killed his wife instead. I don't hurt women. No? Where were you this morning between 9 and 11 o'clock? We know you weren't at work. We checked. <laughs> What's so funny? No, no, I wasn't at work. Uh, I was with my probation officer. I want to check that. <laughs> Shane Jeffries, alibi has been confirmed. He was with his probation officer when Yvonne Steele was murdered. We've still got him in assault police. Pass it on to division. They can charge him on some of it. He me. What about Kevin Steele? Any possibility this is an elaborate plan on his part to get rid of his wife? No indication, but maybe. Nothing from the buildings around the park? No, the TAB checks out as well. And guess what? His horse came in. Ah. We've got witnesses who put him in the deli, buying the coffee. He still could have done it. Time of death can't be that precise, and he's wound up tight. What about these two? Any static there? There doesn't seem to be a lot of love lost between Steele and his son-in-law. I checked with the neighbours, but the general consensus seems that Alex and Kevin, they hate each other's guts. But Alex is far too scared to stand up to Kevin. So what are you thinking, Sarge? Maybe it was a random attack? Uh, I'm not thinking anything open mind. Jennifer, check the database for any similar MOs, not just Victoria and her state as well. Yes, sir. So, this will be long, will it? What is this? Just some belongings, dropping them back to a family. Stolen stuff? No, it's um, from a murder victim. Hey, 
Hey. Don't be long. I won't be. You can deal with him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, piss off. Go back to your flowers. It's broken. Broken. Your mother's things. Jewelry, watch, handbag. The clothes will take a bit longer. Thank you. I'm, I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it. Do you want us to send someone around? I know how to deal with him. Bust. It's okay, Dad. We'll get a new frame for it tomorrow. Hey, we'll fix it. Some things you can't fix. Brody Bowers. This was sudden, vicious, the same MO. Right-handed, from behind, straight knife. He was on his way home from school when he was murdered. Neighbours found him down the street, 100 metres from his own house. Just a kid. Yeah, 14 years old. When did it happen? 12 days ago, Aubrey Wodonga, but just across the border, so the investigation fell to the New South Wales cops. Have you spoken to them? Oh, they've got nowhere. They're thinking maybe gang retribution thing. What? This kid was in a gang? So they're looking at mistaken identity as a possibility. Yeah, it's a convenient one. Have you contacted the family? No, not yet. Family name Bowers. I'll get on to them now. No, drive up there, speak to them personally. There's obviously a connection between the two murders. OK. So, who's coming for a drive? Overnight, Sarge. Incidentals allowance. It's early, too. If you're driving, you can be up and back in a day. So, who's coming with me? Mr. Bowers. Detective Mapplethorpe. And this is Detective Ryan. What happened to you? Arguing with the door. Thanks for agreeing to speak to us. I know this must be very upsetting for you. I don't know what I can tell you. Police are getting nowhere with it. Can I get you anything else? Something to eat, you've come a long way. No, we're fine, thank you. How's your wife coping? I didn't tell her you were coming. Can we get your take on what happened, Mr. Bowers? I have absolutely no idea. There are no witnesses, no reasons I can think of. I mean, I've lived here all my life. I run a small printing business in town, I don't know money, and get on with people. What about your son? Was he in any kind of trouble? No. no. He was a great kid. Popular, a good boy. His death killed his grandfather too, my dad. Him and Brody got on really well. Dad had a massive heart attack a couple of days later. Very sorry for your loss. I 
don't know what else I can tell you. I was hoping there was something you could tell me. We're sharing the information with the police up here. There was a similar murder in Melbourne yesterday, a middle-aged woman. Similar how? Same method of attack, just like what happened to your son. She had a throat cut. And you think they're connected? We don't know, that's what we're trying to find out. The woman's name was Yvonne Steele. Does that name mean anything to you? Steele? Yes, it does sound familiar. How exactly? I don't know, but I'm sure I've heard it somewhere before. Just a second. My father was in the military most of his life. He served in the first Gulf War, then went back as a private contractor. One of the men he served with was named Steele. Kevin Steele. And that's my father there. And the man standing at this end is Kevin Steele. What's this about? You found something. It's about the photograph you had up here. You know the one? Of you in Iraq. Oh, I was going to get it reframed. It's in my bag. I, I don't understand. Where, where did you get this? It belonged to Tom Bowers. That's him there, right? Yeah, son. Twelve days ago, Tom Bower's grandson, Brody, was murdered. What? He was killed in exactly the same way your wife was killed, Mr. Steele. Tom Bowers is dead too. They think the shock of losing his grandson was too much for him. He had a heart attack. We believe this photograph is the connection. It was taken in the Gulf Run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now someone's targeting the relatives of everyone in that photograph. First Tom Bower's grandson, then your wife. Who are the other two blokes in the photo? Oh. One next to me is my brother. He's killed over there. I wasn't aware we lost any soldiers in the Gulf War. It was after. Civilian work. Yeah, well, helping to put the country back together. Who's the other bloke? Scott. Scott Hurley. He wouldn't have anything to do with this. Maybe he did, or maybe he has people he cares about who are in danger too. Either way, we need to talk to him. Where can we get in touch with him? Don't know. Dad? Said I don't know. Look, he, uh, he moves around a bit, does the grey nomad thing. If I don't know where he is, this person that's doing this, they won't be able to find him either, will they? Well, it's his family who's in danger. Do they move around too? I don't think he's got any family. You don't think? When was the last time you saw him? Oh, long time. What about the reunion, Dad? He must have said something then. Yeah, well, he might have. Uh, I can't remember. I was pissed most of the night. What reunion? It's a get-together they have every year. Remembering fallen comrades. So when was the last one? Oh, well, about, uh, about a month ago. About. So how do you contact Hurley about the reunion if you don't know where he is? Well, he calls me when it's coming up. Did something happen over there, Mr Steele, in the Gulf? There was a war. How did your brother die? Could that have something to do with what's happening now? He was killed trying to help those bastards rebuild their stinking country. It was pointless and it was senseless. And that's all I got to say about it. Mr. No, Steele. no, no, I'm done. And whatever you think it happened, you're wrong. You got it? I'm sorry. Reba, do you know how your uncle was killed? My uncle? Uh, uh, I think he was shot, yeah. Uh, Dad doesn't talk about it much. Dad has post-traumatic stress disorder. Is he on medication? Antidepressants. Reva, your dad and Scott Hurley are the only ones who can tell us why this killer is doing this. You think we're in danger? We can organise for protection for you and your family, but the point is I think your father knows where Hurley is. Maybe you can talk to him, just see what you can find out. Oh, I'll try, but, but I can't promise anything. We need your help, Reva, before someone else gets killed. <laughs> You know, I'm beginning to think that our Scott Hurley doesn't even have a driver's license. Not one that I can trace, anyway. Same with electoral rolls. Or maybe you should have another run on Kevin Steele. Forget it. Anything on his brother? Oh, nothing that helps. I dug up his obituary. It says that Arthur Steele died in action. No details. Died in action? These guys went in the armed forces. They were paid mercenaries. How much would they earn, these mercenaries? 
Thinking of applying, Simon? No, oh, but I can see why people would earn a lot of money in a short amount of time, set yourself up for life. Yeah, assuming you don't come home in a box like Arthur Steele. My old man didn't get big bucks for going to Vietnam. He drew army pay, but there was some honour in what he did. When was the last time you saw a mercenary marching on Anzac Day? Progress. Oh, no, lots of dead ends, Sarge. Right, we split resources. Duncan and Jennifer stay on Scott Hill. He tried to fence force pensions. Sarge? And if he is doing the grey nomad thing, he may have tried to hire or purchase a vehicle to suit. Oh, good thoughts. So caravans, okay. camper vans, that sort of thing. That's assuming Steele's not lying. Which he is. I've already spoken to the guy that used to be their commanding officer. By the sounds of things, their tour of duty was pretty uneventful, Sarge. This relates to the period when they went back. Yeah, when they were no longer part of the military operation. In what capacity were they there? Private contractors. Doing what? Security. That's a pretty generic term, Mr. Roach. Uh, it's major. I'd prefer it if you use the rank. You're still in the military? No, 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 but it adds credibility to my line of work. Your credibility isn't that issue here, Mr. Roach. So let's call a spade a spade. You supply mercenaries, that's pretty much it, isn't it? Well, I supply highly qualified personnel to perform dangerous protective duties in areas of high risk. Yes, they're usually ex-army, and they're paid. You call that mercenary, well, I'm afraid that's your problem. I call it security. And tell me, you employed uh, Scott Hurley, Tom Bowers, and Kevin and Arthur Steele? Yes, that's right. Some time ago. For how long? Oh, a little under a year. Doing what? Providing protection to work gangs, rebuilding oil pipelines. Arthur Steele was killed over there, wasn't he? Yes, that's right, unfortunately. Can you explain to us the circumstances around his death? Well, I need to consult my records. And in any case, I don't believe that I'm obliged to divulge that sort of information to you. In which case, we'd be obliged to subpoena the information. Fine. I'll consult my lawyer. Good morning. Look, whatever this is about, I fail to see what it has to do with me or my company. Two people have been murdered, Mr Roach. And we think there is a connection between those murders and something that happened in Iraq 15 years ago. Really? I find that hard to believe. Detective, 15 years is a long time. Well, we're pretty sure we're on the right track and we will find out. Good. I wish you all the very best. Parasite. Any luck with Hurley? Cross-referencing Defence Force personnel files two licences in that age group. We've got it down to just a few. Great. Yeah, but none of them have bought any nomadic type of vehicles in the last three years. Maybe bought a camel. Detectives, I've got a very agitated gentleman asking for you. Look, he's off his head. I don't know what he's going to do. Reaper tried to talk to him last night, but he wouldn't listen to Jackson, it. Listen, why don't you come in here and have a seat and just take it slowly? I tried to reason with him. He shut himself in his room, locked the door. He was, he was on the phone to someone, but he wouldn't say who. Well, Scott Hurley, maybe. That's what me and Reba think, yeah. Then this morning, he, he drove up the road to buy a paper and he didn't come back. You think he and Hurley may have teamed up? Maybe. Kevin started acting like he's back in Iraq. He told Reba he was going to handle it. Which means Kevin must have an idea who the killer is. Or where he's going to be next. OK, thanks, Alex. You go home, look after your wife. We'll find your father and Lawrence Scott Hurley. Don't worry. You better make it fast. I found this in the bathroom. He's tipped all his pills in the toilet. I checked his room. All his guns are gone. I don't know why you need a lawyer, Mr Roach. You're not being charged with anything. We've just subpoenaed some information. Major Roach is entitled to legal representation in any circumstances. No worries. Whatever makes the Major feel comfortable. I got your message, Stanley. Ruined my lunch. Sorry. An ex-mercenary running around with a gun, are you certain? Unfortunately, yes. Maybe two of them. Do we have a medical assessment? On Kevin Steele we do. He's got PTSD. Question is, when did he stop taking his medication? Arthur Steele was shot. Who's this? By an unknown sniper, probably militia. They were operating a fairly vicious guerrilla campaign at the time against the Allied personnel, both military and civilian. And what else happened? Nothing. I was in Iraq at the time. I stood the men down and put on a new crew. Oh, come on. You expect us to believe that you pulled them all out because one guy got shot. Major Roach has told you everything he can. He's told us nothing that we didn't know already. Companies like yours, Mr Roach, they like to operate in the shadows, right? I don't understand what you mean. OK. Well, maybe you'll understand this. 
If I have to charge you with withholding information and obstructing a police investigation, this will end up in court and in the media. Something tells me you wouldn't enjoy that very much. Am I right? There was an incident. What kind of incident? My company accepts no responsibility for what happened. These people signed contracts and we have certain indemnity. Just answer the question. All right. A vehicle approached the workforce. The driver was instructed to stop. He didn't. So the men made a perfectly legitimate tactical decision. Meaning what? They opened fire on the vehicle? Yeah. With automatic weapons. Unfortunately, there was a family on board. Parents. Three children. They were all killed. I believe so. You believe so? Well, I wasn't there at the time. And when I got to the site, it was all over. Was there an investigation? Or was it just buried? <laughs> Frankly, Detective, I don't appreciate you making judgments about something you couldn't possibly understand. And we're going to need details, dates, places, names of victims, everything that may be relevant. Everything I have about the incident is on that. He believed they were all killed. He believed bloody wrong. Look at this. What have you got? There was a survivor taken to hospital, a little kid. No follow-up, no reparation, nothing. Ten years old then, he'd be, what, 25 now? Hammurabi's law, an eye for an eye. Revenge killings all the way from Iraq 15 years on. We need to find out who was killed in that incident over there and the name of the survivor. But isn't that information on the desk? No, everything but. There's a time and a place for the shooting of a four dead, one injured, no names. Typical. Maybe Roach is holding out on us. Oh, he's not holding out. He just doesn't care. So how would the survivor find them in the first place? Where did Kevin and his mates hold their last reunion? Well, Reba Crawford would know that. The reunion, all of them together. That has to be where the survivor saw them. Kevin Steele's put this together too. And he knows where the killer's gonna hit next. Thank you for coming in, Mrs. Stainer. No problem. I remember the gentlemen, three of them. It was just over a month ago. They had quite a party. Drunk? That's an understatement. Their bar bill was huge. And all three of them stayed at the hotel? Yes. Not that they could have gone anywhere else. They could barely make it to their rooms. But it's weird. What? I looked up their registration details, like you asked, and they weren't on the computer. You said, um, Bowers, Steele and Hurley? Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't find them. What about their actual registration cards? They were gone too. Mrs Stoner, the night they stayed there, did anything unusual happen? Actually, there was some unpleasantness. Um, Mr. Steele, I think it was, he took a set against one of our staff. In what way? We refused to be served by him. What was the problem? Steele was the problem. The man is a racist, pure and simple. A racist, so you mean one of your staff members is a foreigner? Amir. He's from the Middle East originally. Iraq? I'm not sure. Is he still working at the hotel? Oh, yeah, but um, he asked for some time off. But I haven't seen him for a couple of weeks. What's Amir's full name? Um, Amir Sahana. And do you have a current photograph of Amir? We did take star photos last Christmas, but well, we gave them away to everyone. What about an address? Oh, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Does he drive a car? Not a car, he rides a scooter. Look. I could call the hotel and get his address from our personnel files, if you like. Hey, check this out. One, two, three, four, five. Jen, you're missing registration cards oh. with home addresses. Matt, we're at Amir Sahana's place. We found Scott Hurley's address for you. 
The address on the registration cards checks out. Matt and Simon are there now. Any sign of him? No, they're busy searching. The place shouldn't be too long. It's a caravan. <laughs> Is he doing the grey nomad thing? I doubt it. It's a permanent site. Kevin Steele lied to us. Is that our man? Ah, uh, yes. Amir Sahana. According to immigration, he came here as a refugee. Been here for nine years. Six of them in Melbourne. It all fits, Sarge. His mother, father and his two older sisters were killed in Iraq. He was ten at the time. OK. Start chasing up friends and associates. The Iraqi community here are closely knit, so... Matt. Sarge, we got something. Yep. An empty box of ammo, a cleaning rag and some gun oil for starters. Come on, Matty! Plus, Hurley does have family. A mum. We found some invoices from a retirement home. So you think she could be Amir Sahana's next target? Yes, we're on our way there now. Yeah, have you got an address? OK. Jennifer and Duncan are on their way. I'll look on those uniforms as a backup. Yeah, OK, great. Thanks. The unit's down this way. The backup's coming. Good. Sooner the better. It's lovely here. Peaceful. Mmm, yeah. And how long have you been here, Mrs. Uh, Hurley? Well, why don't I make you a cup of tea? I, I tell you what, why don't I make you one? I'll put the jack on. I'll go meet the uniforms. Keep her inside. Well, I don't think she's going to make a run for it, is she? Hey! Amir! Stop right there! Don't be stupid, Mr. Steele. I'm a police officer. You're a collaborator. Drop the gun! Drop it. Someone's in the house. Sarge! Uniforms found Matt's gun in the bushes behind Daphne Hurley's unit. And this, it could be a mere Sahana's. There's blood on it. Get it tested. No one saw anything? No. It's only about 50 metres away. I just Someone had to look after Mother Simon. We're about that damn dog squad, Sergeant. Keep searching the grounds. I don't think there's much point, Sarge. Uh, these old fellas over here said they saw three guys get into a grey twin cab four-wheel drive. He said they were dragging a fourth guy who looked like he might have been hurt. That's Kevin Steele's car, Sarge. We've got to yeah, find him. Already got a call off out on it. Get on the radio updates now. <laughs> Stop your little prick. Dig! Dig! Scott, keep a lookout. I can watch the prisoners. Prisoners? That's an order! They're not in Iraq. Make it wider. these men. They're police, like me. Has something happened? And where's Phil? Phil? My husband, where is he? He's, he's not here. And, 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 and what's your name? I'm Jennifer, Mrs Hurley. And I need to know if you have any idea where your son would go with friends if he wanted to get away. My son? Scott. Oh, Scott. He's a good boy. He looks after me. I'm sure he does. Phil, too, before he died. I saw him. Scott? No, Phil. You've made sick, Scott. He's off his medication. Shut up. You need to help him. You're supposed to be mates. Look at him. Dig, you ragged bastard. This is your mother's place, right? I saw the bills at your caravan for the pavers. You talking? Don't talk! They'll find us. Hey! I said shut up! You kill us, they'll find us. It doesn't matter how deep he digs. You think so? You know how many bodies there are out there under the sand? Do you? 
is right, Kev. It's going too far, mate. We can't do this. People are dead. My brother's dead. Right in these stinking putrid villages. And they sit on their hoard of munitions and then they break them out and they kill us. And you want to walk away? I'm going to wait with it. Hey! Bastard. Dick! He shot Amir's family out in the desert. It was Kevin who pulled the trigger, wasn't it? Dick! You can stop this nightmare. The both of you. Here we are, Daphne. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. Oh, it's a jumper. Uh, uh, for Phil. He feels the cold. Mm, that's a shame. A, a thin blood. Scott's the same. I needed one for him as well. He's a good boy. He's selling the house for me. The house? His house. You have a house still? Oh, no, dear. As Scott said, it, it's too isolated for me. Not like here. Lots of people. It's lovely. Though where I lived before, I, I thought I'd missing. Missy, been... where is this place where you used to live? Do you remember the address? And... <laughs> I can't remember, dear. Simon, find out Daphne Hurley's old address. You took away from me, so I took away from you. You killed my brother, now I kill you. What do we do out here? Neil? Is that the go? Okay, you'll get your revenge. They'll find us. He's right, kid. No! No, he killed her. He killed a vine. He killed Tom's grandson. He killed Arthur. No, Kev, Arthur died in a row. It's all getting away from us, mate. Who's gonna pull the trigger this time? One each? Oh, shut up! Bugganers! Enough talk! No, Kev, it's not gonna work. I'm sorry, mate. Put it down. Come on. Gutless bastard. Don't care. Up. Come here. Call an ambulance. For God's sake, go and bring an ambulance. Get on the ground now! Get on the ground! 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 Get to them those men will be charged with attempted murder threats to kill serious assault abduction and i'm charged with murder two counts you killed two people i killed four my family that was in your country it was a war zone murder is murder we were going to my uncle's wedding my father, he'd, he'd managed to get petrol for the trip. My mother and my two sisters were singing. We were happy. And then gunshots. And then the windows and the windscreens just exploded. And there was blood everywhere. No screams. Nothing. It was all too fast. Just the sound of my sister moaning. They ran over and they pulled the doors open and, and she fell out onto the road. <laughs> but when they stood there, looking down at her, the three of them, 
I'll never forget their faces. Watching her while she died. And what about the people you killed? Did you watch them die? <laughs> it wasn't their pain I was interested in. Fifteen years. I never forgot. And here I am in my new life. And there they are. Eating and drinking it. And, <laughs> and laughing, yeah. Remembering good times, huh? Comrades. As soon as I saw their faces, I knew who they were. And what I had to do. So how's Detective Ryan? He's still at the hospital. He's having a scan, make sure he's OK. I'm going to write him up for a commendation. Well deserved. He did good work today. No, I'm just glad he got through, actually. Oh, we all are. The victims don't always end up in the morgue, do they? No, they don't. <laughs>